Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out Private VPN and showing you how to use it in detail. This is sort of like a beginner's guide if you're not familiar with VPNs. Um, Maybe you haven't tried that many VPNs or you don't know how to use private VPN to its full potential. I'm going to be showing you how to do that in this video. Maybe you haven't decided to buy it yet either. Um, you could click on the link down in the description down below. And if you do use that link, it will help support the channel and videos just like these so I could keep doing them on and on. All right, guys, so this is private VPN's application, and it honestly has kind of a cool looking feel that is pretty unique from a lot of other VPNs out there. The cool thing about it is that it does have like a simple appearance and a more advanced appearance. So this is a really new friendly VPN, I think, because it does give you that option. Um, so going back and forth is done just by clicking here. And with the advanced view, we're just going to give you more options basically in this section and it's going to let you look at the settings too. Um, so first of all, we have their external IP, which is gonna be your IP. We have the connection status, which is gonna show if you're connected or not. It will show connected if you are. Locations can be changed by clicking this button. Now, private VPN is a little bit interesting because it has like a streamed service feature, which is actually out of date and it's kind of just like stuck in the client now and I think that we'll remove it eventually. But most of the servers should work with streaming. Um, so you don't even have to use like streaming services, service servers like that. Um, you can just use pretty much any server you want. And you can kind of see the ping and different load times and stuff like that. Um, you can also do the closest server and see the different pings and stuff like that. So you could get the best one. Um, probably pick one that has the lowest ping. So for me, it would probably be Canada, Vancouver. Um, and then you can favorite servers by clicking on this. So it does have a lot of those cool fundamentals that I like with showing ping and being able to favorite and stuff like that. You also have a couple of these different servers you could play around with. Maybe if you're encountering a lot of CAPTCHAs or um, some websites are blocking your VPN use. So it could be um, useful to do that. So what you can do is favorite the server. And then if you go in the favorite section, it will favorite it. This can be useful if you want to access a different version of Netflix. You know, maybe you want to access, you know, the J Japanese version of Netflix or something around like the German version of Netflix. And then you can do that very quickly just by doing that. You can also search the servers as well, which is really nice. And you could filter it by country. So this is actually a very good server categorization, uh, probably one of my favorite ones. And I think the team has gonna, done a good job doing that. And there's a lot of options to play around with as you could see. We also have encryption rates that you could play around with. Um, AES-128 GCM is fine to use and it's gonna give you a little bit of a boost in speed probably on most hardware. Um, AES-256 um, should be the most powerful encryption but not necessarily you know, necessary to get good security. You know, AES-128 is pretty much uncrackable too. And you'll have more um, information about the data up and down when you connect. So I am connected and now we have the external IP, which is like your VPN IP. One thing I do kind of like, um, just it doesn't show your real IP, so it does make it easy for my videos. You'll see this one that shows like time active as well as a little on thing here as well, showing you the different port as well as all this information, which is really handy and pretty well done by private VPN. We also have some more settings to play around with. This will start the client automatic on system startup. Um, it will connect automatically as well or minimize if you don't want it to be around. It's nice to see they have a tap adapter to be able to repair it or install it. Sometimes if you're using other VPNs in conjunction with private VPN or you have other ones installed before this one, you, sometimes you do have to kind of play around, install other VPNs and you might have to repair the tap driver or adapter. So it's good to see that included. We also have connection guard, which is just going to ensure you don't have any DNS leaks or IP leaks. The kill switch is pretty much going to ensure that you're not leaking any um, information. So if uh, something happens with private VPN um, and something gets disconnected or something like that, it's not going to leak your IP. So that's good to see. We also have an application guard, which is like an application kill switch, which pretty much is going to give you the ability to terminate um, a certain application if something happens with the VPN. So if private VPN gets disconnected, it'll shut down Qubit Torrent or something like that. And you can also bind Qubit Torrent to private VPN in um, the settings and kind of bind it to the adapter, which is another good method to do it. 
We also have stealth VPN features here with different ports to play around with. Some of these ports can be useful if your work's uh, blocking private VPN or something like that. Um, it might slow down your network accordingly to this, but it can be good to bypass certain restrictions and it kind of obfuscates your VPN's use. Now that's pretty much it for private VPN's um, settings. And that's kind of all there is to the application. There is a good amount of control here, but not too much to make it too confusing. And you do have the options between kind of ignoring it or going back to the simple view. In the future, I think we're going to see more things coming to private VPN, which is really nice. We're going to see WireGuard support um, within the tunnel or protocol options, which you can find in the settings. Or no, what was it? It's going to be right here. So we should see WireGuard as an option. You could test it right now with private VPN kind of externally through the WireGuard client, but not in the client yet. It should be coming this time very soon. I know the team's been testing it, so that will be really exciting to see. But overall, I'm pretty happy with private VPN's application. I think it's a strong application and not too hard to use, but I hope you know how to use it better now. Anyways, guys, if you want to help support the tutorial and you haven't bought private VPN yet, go ahead and click on the link down in the description down below. Or check out vpntierless.com. You might find some other privacy products you like there as well. Anyways, guys, see you in the next video very soon.